All right, guys. Now let's move along to the my my best twenty three. Now I'm putting myself out there uh, for you guys to pull me apart, and and I'm sure everyone in the comments as well. <laughs> Go your hardest. I can handle it. Um, Keyboards ready, uh, everyone. Get yep. it ready. Tell me where I got it wrong. All right. Can you see that? <laughs> Maybe it's a bit small on the screen for me. So I've got uh, Zach Gut in the back line. I've got Zach Guthrie, Sam DeConning, and Connor O'Sullivan. Now, this is my best 22 at the end of the year. I probably should preface that. Uh, so I think Connor O'Sullivan sure. will work his way into the best side by the end of the year. Uh, on the halfback line, I've got Tom Stewart, Jack Henry, and Mitch Duncan. And then uh, in the center, I've got Max Holmes, Tom Atkins, and Mark Blitzarves. Might be some questions around Blitzarves on a wing. but uh, And then I think half forward, high half forward, he's, a, he's the best in the game. Brian Myers, Jeremy Light. Cameron, and Brad Close. Too close he's now. Okay, Brad Close. Uh, and then the forwards, we've got Tyson Stengel, Tom Hawkins, and Ollie Henry. Uh, the followers, we've got Toby Conway as the number one ruck at the end of the year, uh, pushing out uh, Stanley. And then you've got Paddy Dangerfield and Cam Guthrie somehow finding his way back in. Now, this is really small. Uh, Tanner Bruin on the interchange bench. You've got Tanner Bu- Bruin, Jed Buse, Gary Rowan, Mitch Nevitt, your man, uh, Paul, and uh, Jai Clark as the medical sub. Now, go your hardest. John, I'll start with you. What do you think? What do you like? What do you think is absolutely ridiculous? Um, I like the whole thing. I think that it's oh, John. It's that's why we pretty, pay you. That's why you'll get the next bonus at Christmas time. I am a bit. I'm a bit surprised. Uh, no, no, Sean Manor. You got. You no, I couldn't get Sean him in. Manor. Couldn't fit him in. No. Interesting call there. Um, I like the rest. And no, Ollie Dempsey. Where's Oliver Dempsey? I know. I did this a few Are weeks you crazy? ago. <laughs> <laughs> Would I get Ollie Dempsey in, in, ahead of Gary Rowan or um, I think yeah, I don't know. It's a, it is a tough one, I, but um, I think it'll be out of Mitch Nevitt and Oliver Dempsey. And I think at right at this point, I think Oliver Dempsey might have his number. But apart from that, uh, yeah, it's going to be tough. I tell you, it's going to be a tough year to know who's in each week. But it's up to the every player to play their best to keep their spot. But I think you, you're pretty close, I reckon. I reckon you could be pretty close on best 22 at the end of the year. So, uh, yeah. oh, I hope so because, I mean, I don't want to see the old guys get pushed out, um, no. but I do want to see the younger guys push up. Um, anyway, Jake, what do you think? Be kind. Uh, I think that's <laughs> all I know how to do. If you want your Christmas bonus, um, <laughs> That's right. That's no, fantastic. Really wouldn't change a thing. Um, no, the graphics great Suck too. Up. Whoever put it together did Ooh. a really good job. Um, the, Colin did I, fantastic. The, look, the only thing I would exactly well done, Colin. Colin. Um, <laughs> I would probably have Mitch Nevitt out right now. I've been a big Mitch Nevitt stan um, since he came like to the team. I just think right now I'd I'd put Dempsey on the bench. Um, it'll probably have Nevitt left out. Um, I, I think that's probably the easier change to make. I was looking at the back line going, does this is going to be sacrilegious? And it'll be sacrilegious, especially once he's like churning out 24 touches a game and a bunch of intercept marks and setting things up. But like, is this the year with Mitch Duncan where it sort of comes down a little bit? I saw some stuff in the preseason that made me a little bit worried, but I'm I'm chalking it up right now because I love Mitch Duncan. I'm chalking <laughs> that up as it was preseason. But I don't know. I just I, I like with Max Holmes moving down back, is that a bit of signal? I guess. Mm, maybe. We want Max Holmes down the back, explosiveness, sort of that raking kick that he can have. We want him to learn down there and then and then take the job. But I see Dempsey on a wing. And floating forward, that that's what I sort of see it for Dempsey, and unfortunately for him, for for Mitch Nevitt, that's probably what a lot of people saw Mitch Nevitt as being able to do: play on the wing, and then he's also a great contested mark. And unfortunately, Dempsey is really good at those things, and I think just at, right at the moment is probably playing better, more confident footy. Well, shots have been fired on your man Mitch Nevitt uh, by Jake. Uh, <laughs> thumb to return serve. What have you got to say? 
I'm not returning serve. I agree for now. Ooh, um, wow. As much as as much as I think the ceiling for Mitch Nevitt is potentially higher, um, I think based on everything that's exposed and even the selection around the the game against the community week against Essendon would suggest that Ollie Dempsey's ahead. And he played a pretty damn good game too in 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 that. I can't remember how much he played. I think it was a good three quarters or so of it. Like he was, he was really solid. Um, and you know, makes the argument to have a spot. So right now, I would argue that he is ahead of Mitch Nevitt. Again, I think Mitch Nevitt maybe in the, in the fullness of time might actually be, I guess, the better quote unquote player. Hard to kind of measure because they might very well play different roles. Um, but right now, I think Ollie Dempsey's ahead and uh, probably deserves that that final spot on the bench prior to the Medi sub. It will be interesting to see. Obviously, we've got Toby Conway in there, and that is the mm-hmm. assumption, I presume, that uh, that he, I guess, remains fit over the course of the year. I guess what I'm That's curious right, to know yeah. what your thinking was around that, whether, well. it was, whether it was mm-hmm. the Toby kind of remained fit, and so was, you know, I guess you see the natural improvement that's going to occur. I mean, his debut when he beat the Australian Ruckman, so naturally he's going to be the All-Australian this year, right? Um, but, you know, or was that more about Reece Stanley and what happens to him over the year? What was, what was your thinking behind that one? I'm curious. Uh, probably, well, my thinking to start with was I think they'll want to get plenty of games into Toby Conway. Um, and probably similar to Jake's comment about Mitch Duncan is, is, is he getting really close to the end and can he, can his body hold up? And he's, we all know Ray Stanley's had some issues with his health over the, over the last year or two. Uh, he's still playing great footy considering, um, but I think Toby will probably be that man towards the end and Reese. If, if things start to go downhill for Reese, it might be that, well, you know, why are we keeping this Toby Conway in the VFL? Why don't we give it him, getting him to 50 games as quick as we can? Um, you know, he's, you want him to earn it. You want all the players to earn their spot. Um, but sometimes you need to give them the experience as well. Um, I, I, I guess my pushback on that, and it's only, I guess, because of the, the naming, like you've called it best 22 or yeah, 23 oh, or whatever. Yeah, whatever. Yeah. Um, I think if we're if we're talking about an assault on the finals, we're getting towards the pointy end. We've got a largely full, you know, fully healthy list. Then, for as much as we want to do, develop Toby Conway, if Reece Stanley's available and he's and he's fit, I feel like the club probably errs on the side of Reece Stanley simply because he's been there. He's got that aerobic capacity that at the moment Toby Conway doesn't. Um, and I mean, like he's he's a bigger, he's is more of your traditional plot, and I don't mean this in a disrespect way, more of that traditional kind of plotting ruckman. Um, so that that speed and strength and everything that kind of Reece Stanley has been able to draw upon for years, it's been giving him the edge in contests, even against your Max Gorns of the competition, um, might be something that's going to be looked upon more fondly when we get to that point of the year. So I'm wondering if we're talking, you know, about a best twenty-two, then maybe Reece does also hold on to that spot. But I, I guess I've picked the teeth out of two out of your four so far. The other two I completely yeah. agree with. Uh, all things going well. I think Connor, Connor O'Sullivan does probably take that that spot from uh, um, Zach Tui slash Jake Collajesny. And I think Jai Clark naturally gets to make that jump as well. So I think and the no rest of the list... I'm no, one's mentioned on Parfit. no one mentioned Parfit. I haven't got him in this list, but no one clearly rates him to, to make a comeback. This is the year of the Parfit comeback. Uh, I don't see I it. mean, I hope so, because mm. I think he's mm. going back to kind of the comment about Mitch Nevitt with ceilings. I think his ceiling is huge, but he just seems to have kind of lost his way a little bit. And whether that's kind of the definition of his role that's created that problem or something else entirely, I don't know. But it does feel like he's kind of lost his way a little bit on the field. Hopefully you would almost something. think that that he would be a perfect player to come in. You know, when you're talking about, oh, we need someone who can be hard in and under, win a bunch of contested ball and get it out to the... We are talking about this on the, the Chaps pod the other night, saying you look at the contrast from 2022 to 2023, and one of the biggest issues was our lack of uncontested footy. And I think that really came from a, a breakdown in clearance work and, yeah. and contested work that stopped the supply to the outside. So like Parfit could be that perfect sort of player, but he's just lacked the form. And unfortunately, like has also been hampered by injury. And when he's played VFL, it's been up and down. There's been some of the same sort of disposal issues and that sort of thing. Um, I, If I may take 10 seconds just to on Mitch Nevitt saying, um, Paul mentioned like the potential of different roles. I think Mitch Nevitt's ceiling could be like a genuine, like, 
A-grade midfielder, which I don't think is something that Ollie Dempsey is going to have. Ollie Dempsey is a different kind of – to me, Ollie Dempsey is that like Stevie J, Brian Myers, playmaking kind of outside player. I think Mitch Nevitt has the frame and the type of skill set that if he put it all together, like he has that Five. like – Big body yeah, midfielder, but it's just whether it all comes together. Zach, different size and height and all that, but Zach Guthrie took about four or five years to put some sides, put some muscle on, didn't mm-hmm. he? So, can you? Um, I think we'd yeah. think about Ollie Dempsey a little bit differently if his arms and chest and tall, all that was a little bit bigger. And you think, oh god, he can throw some, he can throw some tin around the room now. Um, but I think he just seems a bit too light frame for AFL at this stage. Uh, give him time if he. He's got to play. His skills are going to be really there uh, to get games. Um, if he can, if he can get ten games this year and keep a spot on the list for next year, I'm very, very optimistic about about his ceiling in in the future. But I, I agree with all your comments. Um, if there's any names, uh, maybe anyone who's watching in the chat that we haven't mentioned, there's probably one or two uh, that you think, oh, hang on, what about this guy? Uh, then let us know in the comments. But we'll keep the show moving because.